So now that we've got the anatomy out of the way, we can now start looking at the real functional capabilities and mechanisms behind how water and materials within water transport throughout a plant structure. Now we'll entitle this next flowchart Water and Mineral Uptake 1. And we have to first understand in this idea of water, remember water always is associated with the minerals, uh, this idea that water has a potential within it. It has energy within it. We're going to call this idea water potential. This is an idea that often confuses students, but it's a very simple overall concept if you look at the big picture behind water potential. There's going to be a little bit of physics involved, but it's nothing more than you've already established in your previous coursework and also within Bio 1 when we looked at the idea of energy and potential energy. So, what is water potential? Water potential is going to be a critical component in understanding how and if water and the associated minerals within it are going to be uptaken, are going to be spread throughout the plant. Remember, that's a key important part that gives plant success. So, in order to understand water potential, we need to take out or understand a little bit of terminology. The first term to understand is actually a symbol. and This is a Greek symbol, which is psi. P-S-I. So this Greek symbol is psi. That's what water potential means. Okay, That's how we uh, abbreviate water potential. And water potential is also measured in the following unit, and that's megapascals. So this is just going to be important for right now to understand because we're going to be utilizing these terms, psi and megapascals, uh, a lot more as we move forward. So in order to say water potential, abbreviate it, we're just going to put psi. So every water that you're looking at, let's say water has a certain psi level, certain water potential. And it is measured in what value? Megapascals. What does this mean? All of this terminology and this nonsense, this Greek letter, what does this mean? All of this, all of this simply means is that this represents the free energy of water free energy of water, aka when we say free energy, all we really mean is the amount of energy available to do work. Water has a certain amount of energy available to do work. What is that energy sort of signified as? Well, it's signified as psi. The water potential to do work is signified through psi and measured in megapascals. So we'll start off with a very basic understanding of this. When you have the following psi value, so psi is equal to 0 megapascals, what does this mean? What does this standard mean? And this is something we'll reference continuously now. So when you have this standard number, this 0 megapascal psi water potential value simply means that this is what the water potential for pure, for pure H2O water at sea level um, and also room temperature, RT for room temperature. So when you have just pure water, no minerals within it whatsoever, all H2O molecules at sea level, not above sea level, not below sea level, and at a normal room temperature, you have a zero megapascal value of psi. Okay, This is going to be our reference point, because from this point forward, we're not going to have zero. We're going to change pure water and we're going to turn it into some other type of water. We're going to turn it into water with minerals and then we might have it in a hotter climate. Then we might have it in a higher climate or a lower lower sort of uh, overall, let's say, sea level than our standard here. Okay, So let's look at that. Now, what we have to establish is the following. If we have a higher psi value, if we just randomly say that a, a value of psi is higher, we simply mean that the higher the psi value, the more potential energy, PE, there is to do work when H2O moves. When the water moves, it carries within it a potential energy. If that potential energy is a lot, we would say that the water has a high psi value. It can do a lot of work while it moves. Now, psi decreases, let's write this down down here, psi, this value, decreases when solutes 
These are smaller things that are dissolved in water. When solutes, water is a solvent, the universal solvent, the psi value of that universal solvent decreases when solutes are dissolved in H2O. So when we no longer have pure H2O, we are going to have solutes within it, and thus we will end up having a low psi value. That psi value will actually be, and always will be, a negative number. Why? Well, because pure water with no solutes is at zero. And if we have a psi decreasing when there are solutes, that would mean that this pureness is gone, and we have to go below zero. Thus, we have a negative number value for psi when there are solutes within the water, whenever that may be. So, what can we say about this? Furthermore, solute ions, why do we see this negative number? Well, that's because solute ions and molecules bind to H2O. H2O is a universal solvent. It's very good at binding things to it. And because you have this binding of solute ions to the once pure H2O molecules, this is going to do the following in terms of energy, capable energy or potential energy. This reduces the motion of H2O molecules. Think of these H2O molecules when they're free, when they're pure, as the capability, having the capability of moving freely and having no sort of heavy weight attached to them. When you attach a heavy nitrate ion, let's say, to a water molecule, you're reducing its capability to move. And because you're reducing its motion, you are therefore overall going to be reducing its cap capacity to do work. So when you reduce the motion of H2O molecules, this directly reduces the capacity of those molecules to do work. And if you're reducing this capacity to do work, what are you doing? You're reducing water potential. Thus, psi, water potential, decreases because there are these solute ions blocking the movement of pure water because now water is associated with these solutes, minerals and ions, whatever they may be. Okay. So if there's no solutes, we have a higher potential energy, or let's say if there's less solutes, we have a higher uh, psi value, and then if we have more solutes, our psi value decreases. So this is quite confusing here, stay with me when we talk about the rules of psi. The rules of psi are simple. Here we go. H2O, water, moves from, when it wants to go from a certain place to another place, the rule is simple. H2O moves from a higher psi value, meaning that it's a less negative. Now, I know that's a little confusing. Bear with me. H2O moves from a higher psi value region to a lower psi. Lower psi would also just mean more negative region. What does that mean? That is quite confusing, I understand. Simply speaking, what we're saying is the following. Take a look at this. There's a better way to say this, but this is more of the, the let's say, technically correct way to say it when we're talking about water potential. This first part, H2O moves from higher side, less negative region, right? What does that mean? That simply means H2O moves from, this is how I think of it, H2O moves from hypotonic hypotonic don't forget that word remember it's from bio one hypotonic less tonic less solutes in other words let's write that down less solutes region to what to a hypertonic to some region that has more solutes now this will make sense when we Connect the dots here. More solutes region. Now why do these things equal each other? That equals this and this equals that. Well, because we said when there are solutes, more solutes dissolved in water, we have a decrease in psi. And if you continuously dissolve more and more solutes, you're going to lower the psi value so much more that you get a more negative number. You're going to get a more negative psi value as compared to when you didn't have as many solutes. When you had a hypotonic solution with less solutes, you are had a higher psi value. That higher psi value was thus less negative, 
and you're going to move from this less negative region. You still have maybe one or two solutes, let's say, but now you have a region that has 100 solutes. You want to even that out. You want to make that balanced. You want to take this hypotonic region that has a lot more solvent than solute and bring it to the region that has a lot more solute than solvent. And how are you going to do that? You're going to utilize the rules of psi. H2O moves from a higher psi value, a less negative, to a lower psi value, more negative region. Now we're going to see this in action and apply this to an actual plant. Don't worry, in the next flowchart. Just take a look at this, absorb it. It's a little bit much in the beginning, but trust me, when you apply it to the plant, it makes 100% complete sense.